What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. Today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. Now I picked this up not because there was a lot of hype built around it or how fantastic it looked or what it felt like or the price point. I picked it up because I'm having this big discrepancy right now with Kanger Tech. I don't really think that they know it, but I, I have the discrepancy with them because they used to be known for making some of the most solid, effective, efficient products. And then they just fell off. 5.6 was a reach. I liked it, but it was a big boy, never really sold. Nobody ever liked it. Tinted glass, different coils. You can rock different sets of coils inside the tank. It was really high speed for what it was. Got a lot of shit though, just because of the size. Then they released that I RDA and I fucking hated it. It was the dumbest idea ever. And I can't understand how a company that has such a great background makes something so shitty and they think they could get by with it. They released a couple things from them like that U-Boat, U-Pan. I literally can't think of anything else that they've made in the past six months. And if they did, even me sitting here trying to think about it, I can't think of it. So what does that tell you about the product? Couldn't have been that good. Now they're back. I'm assuming that whoever they fired in the design department, they got back. They must have said, listen, we're making too much shit. Hire up Sunshine Lou, get her back in here, have her make some devices. Because this isn't a failed attempt. They actually did pretty good here. There's one huge problem though. I can't read the menu. It's all in Chinese. I had mentioned in a video that I did is it'd be really cool if instead of a manual, they put the respective language to that country it's being sold at in the manual instead of being multilingual. There's no way that Kangaroo Tech saw that video because this device is brand new, but the whole menu is Chinese. So I have to play hide and go fuck myself as I'm looking for Carmen San Diego and Dora the Explorer inside the menu to figure out what charade equals what. I, or shape. I, charade is not the right thing. That's when I do something and you guess what it is I'm doing with words, names, that's not it. Well, I no, you know what? I guess that is it because I'm looking at a shape trying to figure out what exactly that means. So I am gonna be playing charades. I was never really good at that. I used to get so mad I would just walk away and uh, 10 seconds in. Don't sign language to me. You have a mouth talk. Tell me what you're trying to say. Bob, that's right, that's the first word. Done, see? The game will be much quicker if you don't do sign language and you just say what it is. I feel like that defeats the whole purpose of the game, but it would still make it quick and not a very fun game because then I'm just <laughs> throwing out the answers. So what we're looking at today is the Kanger Tech. I don't know how to say this. I'm gonna go with Zloom. It's all the way up here in the corner too. You really can't see it because it's not plastered all over the box. Probably because they were a little embarrassed that once they printed the box that this is not the word we were going for. We were going for plum and we ended up with Zloom. I feel like that word is Hebrew. Zloom. Zloom. Assalamu alaikum. That's not Jewish, but still. Malaikum assalam. This is a kit. It doesn't come with batteries. Dual 18650 with a sub ohm tank on the top. And I'm hoping that they went back to their original roots and they made a solid sub ohm tank. Because if those of you that don't know about Kanger Tech, they were one of the pioneers along with the Spire side by side. Sub tank. That's before sub ohm tank was actually a genre if you will well not a genre but a field and then you had the aspire atlantis those two were neck and neck and fun fact for you when the kanger tech sub tanks came out the original ones the big jammies the seven mils my cost was 48 dollars. they sold for 65 that was just a sub ohm tank you got coils you got glass but now sub ohm tanks are like 14 bucks a little bit of a difference. So without further ado, let's bring this It's like a Murloc from World of Warcraft. Let's flip it. Don't really see a lot of Kanger Tech on this. There's only one branding and that's on the other side. On the top of the box, all the information, little bulleted sheet that tells you everything that's inside the box and some of the features. Ah, oh, it's a nice size, 4.5 mil. Dual 18650 battery is very good. On the side, there is Kanger Tech right there, Zloom. On the bottom of the box, you got their social media, their website, Scratch and Sniff. This is obviously going to be Cherry Blackberry Frosted Pickle flavor and scented. On the flip side of the box, all the information about what is included and a little bit about this device. Go ahead and give that a freeze frame for you. Does that mean that this is the first batch of Heli Hansen? Hump Day Hotels. Hello, Harry. Here's number one. What is this? 
What is that supposed to be? You guys gotta see this shit. What is this? Is that a lemon head? If that's their attempt at making a baby avatar, we have a huge problem. Because if your baby's head is shaped like a fucking lemon head, <laughs> if your baby's head looks like a candy, ah, I don't know if you should have let them leave the hospital right away. It's never a good sign when your child's head looks like a Jolly Rancher. You know, you, you gotta do something. Call somebody. Get the best doctor on the phone. I don't know what that is. That looks like Charlie Brown with half his face missing. He got this fatty next to him. Inside the box. Here we go. Really nice display. Kinger Tech, you know, their symbol, their icon. Very nice packaging. Box, we'll go over shortly. You get an extra coil, a spare bubble glass, tinted bubble glass on the actual tank itself with kind of an awkward drip tip. I'm assuming that does match, but that does look kind of pink to me. Underneath the box, we're going to have two different boxes. Inside the box, you got a little battery safety precautionary measures to be taken. Make sure if your battery looks like any of these. First off, figure out what mod is doing that and try to fix it. If you can't fix it and that's the way it's going to be by default, just make sure you keep those wrapped and safe. Last thing you want is the side to be exposed and the top. Keep the insulator ring. Any of these pictures are an absolutely terrible example with the exception of the proper one all the way to the left. And there's your warning on the back side of that card. Instruction manual on how to authenticate your device. User manual. Now, this isn't hard to navigate with the exception of it's a little bit difficult because you can't read what it is, the parts. You have to look at the pictures and kind of gauge what it is. Now, if I could figure out which setting actually allows me to change a language to English, which is where this mod was sold, I think we'll be good to go. Output voltage, there you go, eight volts, very, very good. Glass is in fact tinted red, and that's the bubble version. However, the bubble extra that comes with this is not tinted red, it's actually crystal clear. The drip tip on the top is some type of red, it's a little weird. To fill up the tank on the top, you'll see these little tracks. Just go ahead and push that, and that's going to open up the top to fill it up. You'll also see an arrow right here. 510 drip tip, and that's a really nice O-ring on there. That's one of those juicy jammies, like a mini lifesaver that's been sucked on for 30 minutes. Nothing too crazy going on here. It's a sub ohm tank. Coil inside of this almost looks like a Vaporesso NLG coil or a Baby Beast. That is the coil that it comes with. Wow. Who would have thought that Kanger Tech would have went the whole baby beast route. Would you look at that? Well, I'll be a pickle sandwich. That's pretty crazy. Usually, Kanger Tech was very adamant about sticking with their own coils, but they're venturing into the realm of baby beast coils or looking at this Vaporesso NRG. This coil is a 0.18, 40 to 60 watts, and that does look some type of mesh. One coil inside of the pack that's exactly the same as the one that is inside the tank. So all we're gonna do is saturate this up, just get it ready to go. Just juice up your jammies here, just like that. Let that sit for a little bit. Once you have this all filled up, let it sit and let it all saturate up. Give about two minutes or three minutes, respectively speaking. Up here on the top is gonna be your screen. Down here on the bottom, it's that Illuminati-esque type look. You know, it's got little red rings and then you could change the colors of this right here. That's really the only LEDs that are located on this whole mod. On the side of this is kind of where the magic happens. It's a very, very smooth feeling. Not like the Vapor Shark, a little less rubbery, so to speak. Just has a really nice grip to it. On the back side of it says loom and then you have a protruding trapezoid and then over here you got your battery venting on the bottom. Kanger on the bottom of the door. On the top of what we could fit, 28 should be no problem whatsoever. 30 millimeter gives you a little bit of overhang. About a half a millimeter overhang on both sides of it. It's not extreme so you definitely could get away with using a 30 millimeter on the top of this mod. Fire button almost looks like it's touched to be activated. However, it is not. You do have to press it. Battery tray on the inside, very, very smooth. Same material that you see on the frame of this is the material on the inside of the mod. Battery orientation is in fact listed on the tray. It's a little difficult to see because it is solid black, so here we go. On the back side of the tray, you have this groove that's cut into to it and then you have a large magnet on the top. Put this in down here on this little ledge and then you kind of see if I could slide it in just like that. Pretty secure, doesn't wobble around at all and then there's your screen. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but I can assure you that little bit of jumpiness you see is not the camera, is the actual mod itself. So you can see the screen, very, very super clean. You go all the way down, 
it scrolls back down and then you can scroll back up. So we do got a round robin situation. Time located here, battery's located there, and then your voltage and then your ohms right there. I'm not quite sure what that little thing is there. I'm assuming that's some type of dial that moves when that moves. Nope, I don't know what that is. You would think that that would go with the whole thing. To access the menu on this is the up and fire button, but check this out. Okay, that's the serial number, that's, that's both. Everything is in Chinese, literally everything. So let's go through this one by one. Oh, this is gonna be rough. That I assume is the time. Whatever menu you're in and you have it set, you just hold down the button, it brings you back to the previous menu. This right here is going to be the brightness of the screen, very easy to adjust. And as you can see, when you bring it down, really starts to dim it, almost to a bare nothing. But I can promise you that there is something on that screen right there. Bring it back up just for review purposes. Right here, this is your interwebs. If you want to browse Google Chrome, maybe even check out Wikipedia, this is the button you're going to want to hit. No, but seriously, this is for your language. Set it up to English. I don't know why that wasn't set when I got this. And then your flash right here is for that little screen that appears once it kind of sits for a while. We're just gonna go with that one. Light switch, either on or off, and they're referencing this guy right here. Leave it on just so I could show you what it looks like. Light control, can't really see it right now. What's gotta happen is once there's a tank on the top, you'll see what it looks like. When you select power save, you can turn it on or off, and when you select on, it's not gonna light up this LED when there's a dripper on the top. I guess that's kind of saving it. I'm not quite sure sure as to how much that's going to save battery life and then obviously exit if you want to change the metals instead of just using power mode you're gonna hit the fire button three times one two three and then there's nickel titanium stainless steel back to wattage check this out ready this is quite unique give that first line of read do not look into the drip tip while vaping to prevent juice from spitting into your eyes do not swallow the e-liquid what e-liquid that is the kanger tech zloom box mod starter kit let's bring it on the top hey yo, what's going on back on the top with the kanger tech zloom with the zloom sitting on the top zloom Boom. There it is right there. This is picking up at a 0.18. We're going to be using 45 watts. Very, very low power, but check out this vapor production. It sounds like people are screaming in my ear. I mean, that has got to be one of the loudest sub ohm tanks I've ever heard, or even drippers or RTAs. Listen to the sound that is coming out of this dripper. Okay, what? I got really good flavor, not gonna deny that. It's mesh, so you know you're gonna get something good. And the crazy part is, is I really didn't break this in. I just let this sit a little bit while we were talking about the mod, but now it's hitting fantastically. However, guys, listen, that sound, you know what it is? I can tell you what it is. The Monster V3 by 528 Customs had a pin right? Like a pin that went down that was your positive. And there were air slots drilled into that. And however, if you didn't stick something in the air slot to adjust it, to line it up with the airflow directly on the bottom, you got this really loud sound. Basically, I take it like the air was coming in and going in at an angle, so it just made a lot of noise. This has got that same type of pin going down there. I kid you not, I swear to God, this is the loudest sub ohm tank I've ever used. And I'm not even hitting that hard. You, let's hit it hard. Let's hear it. Ready? Here we go. Let's try to cut that down a little bit. I feel like this baby's screaming in my ear. That's why they have the picture of the baby on the back. This is going to sound just like this picture. Cutting the airflow down in half, you can hear that it's a lot better than what it was wide open. Still a lot of noise. I mean, that's a very, very noisy sub ohm tank. Cutting it down even further reduces the noise, but now you're cutting down the hit. The little slide mechanism is a nice feature. It's very easy to adjust. You don't have to worry about a hinge locking or freezing in place when you open it up to fill it up. This is rough. Kanger Tech hasn't made great devices the past year, year and a half. Like, they just haven't done anything that was like, whoa. This 
I, in a way, kind of redeems them. You messed up, you made all that yucky shit, and now here you are making something that's a little bit better. The frame on this, the grippy, is really, really nice. The screen, you know, it's a simple screen. It's not too much, it's not too flashy, but the LED on the bottom, which now is gone, isn't bad when you shut it off. It's when you turn it on, it's a little ridiculous. I don't want you to take what I'm saying here and go thinking that this is the best King of Tech mod that I've ever done a review on because it's hardly that. I can't say that it's a piece of shit. The sub ohm tank, if you're trying to do some stealthy jammies, you're gonna wanna get a different sub ohm tank. I don't know if you could buy the mod just by itself or you have to buy it with the kit. The way that I bought it was as a kit because there's some people that are just starting out vaping. They want something that gives really good vapor production and good flavor. This does it, but it does it very boisterously. It's a doozy. Let's try to do this quietly. Sounds like a fucking vacuum or like a plane engine, uh, like the prop jammies. If I was to rate this device on a zero to 10 for a starter kit, I'm gonna give it a 5.5, maybe a six, maybe, because I like the way that the mod feels. Again, the sub ohm tank functions well and it's a really nice touch that they match that with the mod and then the drip tip with the mod as well. That's super sexy. I would have really liked to seen this little silver ring they did down here, which I don't even know why that's there, but if they would have made that black, would have made it look that much better. But then again, we're being very meticulous at this point. Where it is right now is not bad. Just a little pointer to Kanger Tech. If you're gonna ship something out to the United States, you may want to look in translating the menu because having that in Chinese is difficult to navigate. If you could get just the mod without the sub ohm tank, probably a six. It's the sub ohm tank that's really hurting this rating because it's extremely loud for what it is. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jason.